Good morning and welcome to our service of Holy Eucharist, Rite 2. Um, our service begins, as always, on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer, which is the red book in the back of your food. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his name, now and forever. Amen. And we say together the colic for purity found at the bottom of the page. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say to Gloria, glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, and heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of God, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and charity, and that we may obtain what you promise. Make us love what you command. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the word of God. A reading from the book of Sirach. Give to the Most High as he has given to you, and as generously as you can afford. For the Lord is the one who repays, and he will repay you sevenfold. Do not offer him a bribe, for he will not accept it. And do not rely on a dishonest sacrifice, for the Lord is the judge, and with him there is no partiality. He will not show partiality to the poor, but he will listen to the prayer of one who is wronged. He will not ignore the supplication of the orphan or the widow when she pours out her complaint. The word of the Lord. Today's Psalm is Psalm 84, verses one through six. Join me in reading responsibly by whole verse. How dear to me is your dwelling, O Lord of hosts. My soul has a desire and longing for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh rejoice in the living God. The sparrow is found her house, and the swallow the nest where she may lay her down. By the side of your altars, O Lord of hosts, my king of God. Happy are they who dwell in your house, they will always be praising you. Those who go through the desolate valley will find it a place of springs, for the early rains have covered it with pools of water. They will climb from height to height, and the God of gods will reveal himself in Zion. A reading from the second letter to Timothy. I am already being poured out as a libation and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day and not only to me, 
but also to all who have longed for his appearing. At my first defense, no one came to my support, but all deserted me. May it not be counted against them, but the Lord stood by me and gave me strength so that through me, the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and save me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Son and of the Holy Spirit to seek God's will for us in community. Amen. Please be seated. I love that in that letter from Paul, he says he's been poured out, poured out. Every piece of him, every bit of him, given for the good and for the love and the faith that he has in God. Today in the gospel, we get a little insight into Jesus's thoughts on what humility looks like and what it doesn't look like. We have already gotten more than a few examples along the way of the disciples comparing themselves to one another in a one-upmanship kind of way. 
So maybe when it said he told this parable to those who exalted themselves a little bit, who thought that they were better than others, he's addressing some of that still going on. Uh, we can't really know. It said some people who thought that they were better, <laughs> in other words. But some of the prayer of the Pharisee uh, sounds like that kind of thing, especially at the end, doesn't it? But much of his prayer is actually really fun in that day and time. He tells what he does, and he is grateful for those things that he is not. So when I cough, I'm letting you know, this is still because of the tube that went down my throat for the surgery. <coughs> so just, just so you know. Having done two services, I'm finding out that the 14 days they said it took to recover is really true. I have three more days <laughs> in that list. So, uh, but much of, much of his prayer is actually kind of fine. For that day and time, this was an appropriate prayer of thanksgiving and gratitude. He messes up at the end. So let's take a look at that. Richard Swanson uh, points out some of the positive acts of the Pharisees, because we're really used to like really blaming the Pharisees for everything and saying that they were bad people and they tripped up Jesus and they did all this kind of stuff when many of them did not. You know, Luke's gospel has kind of a mixed history with that. But so some of their positive acts were that they preserved faith in God even under the crushing force of the Roman military occupation. And they preserved it by maintaining clarity about the way the goodness of God ought to shape all of a faithful life. And we hear that in his prayer, the goodness of God. But the Gospel of Luke, as I said, gives us this mixed picture of Pharisees because they're humans, right? And so they are a mixed bag just like we all are. For example, two chapters before this, Jesus tells two parables about prayer. Oh, uh, pardon me. Two chapters before the two parables, last week and this week. Two chapters before the Pharisees are called lovers of money. But in chapter 13, some friendly Pharisees warn Jesus of Herod's intention to kill him so that they can protect him. So it's a mixed bag. Some scholars actually even believe that Jesus was a Pharisee himself, a keeper of the law and a teacher, which is what Pharisees were. And that makes sense with some of the testing that they would put him through, right? Because the testing wasn't a, a negative thing necessarily. It was simply a standard of practice of theological curiosity, as well as checks and balances to verify qualified teachers of the law. <coughs> Pardon me. But all that aside, we want to look at this parable, don't we? Thank goodness I made this short. <laughs> in this teaching, Jesus creates a parable for his followers that examines two people saying a prayer. One prayer is said by a Pharisee that starts out as well as could be expected by a righteous man, but falls into sin at the end, and one said by a tax collector whose presence in the parable as an individual with a moral conscience helps break down a barrier that could have been a divisive moment for Jesus' followers when Jesus meets Zacchaeus, which we'll hear about next week. Zacchaeus, if those of you who remember the story, is a chief tax collector. So chief among the people that do oppressive taxes under the Roman Empire and could be considered a very bad man. But this parable kind of sets the stage to help break down that stereotype that his followers probably had where they thought they were better than, just like the Pharisee in his parable, they thought that they were better than the tax collectors and the thieves and the rogues. It probably helped them to see him as a human being when they met him, even just a little bit, like that little bit of a mustard seed that can open up a heart <coughs> it helped them to not place on him all that was unfair in the Roman tax system as his, as his burden to carry as a human. We need to remember that that encounter, though, has yet to happen. We haven't gotten down that road yet. 
And Jesus is using this character in this story because he was seeing around him this inequality, this we're better than you because we follow Jesus, you're better than, you know, all of that kind of stuff. Um, tax collectors were hated in the Roman Empire. They were enforcers of economic oppression, and many of them even increased the taxes that they collected to line their own pockets. And the reason for some was because they wanted to get rich, but for most of them, it was because that tax system was so oppressive that they did it to keep their families fed and out of the poorhouse, so to say. But that tax collector in this prayer doesn't lie about his part in that system. And he is remorseful. He, it is enough of a remorse, we assume, that he may change, that you can apply to that character in this parable a willingness to change and to be sad about his actions. The Pharisee is definitely living what he preaches, too. He gives a tenth of his income, and this would be pre-tax in that society, so you know it's definitely a true sacrifice. He even does more than required in his fasting practice by doing it twice a week instead of just one week, which was the required amount. So he is a good man. He is doing his best. He is showing up, and he is trying. He does not in any way, shape, or form claim to be perfect. And he's appropriately grateful not to have followed temptation down any number of paths that would be injurious to his soul. Who knows why he included adultery on that? Maybe he was a tempted man and walked away. Who knows why he included thievery and um, the, the sins of a tax collector. He may have been tempted. Temptations were all around them. But he said, I have not done these things. Thank you, God, for helping me not do them. Thank you. But this is a lesson that Jesus is teaching about humility and not judging a book by its cover. So the Pharisee character in the parable, the one they would expect to know how to pray and to be a righteous man, soon loses the thread in the parable. Without knowing anything at all about the person beside him other than he is a tax collector, and you can tell by, that by the clothes they wore, he prays gratitude that he is not like this tax collector. There's where he loses the thread. He takes it from the theoretical I have not committed adultery, I have not been a thievery person, I have not done these things to the specific, I'm glad I'm not like Vander. You know, <laughs> what if someone said that prayer? How horrifying, isn't it? It made me like feel bad just to say it out loud. He places all the characteristics of the bad tax collectors who are dishonest without even a thought that this man who is at prayer is at prayer. He's not out in the world spending his ill-gotten gains. He is on his knees beside him, the righteous Pharisee, saying a prayer of forgiveness and asking for God's mercy. The tax collector as an equally flawed person leaves off any kind of comparison to anyone else. He only prays for his own salvation. Barbara Brown Taylor says that prayer helps us remember who we are and who God is. God is merciful and loving and just. And in this story that Jesus tells, only the tax collector connects that understanding of God into his prayer life in a way that she shows he understands the truth. He banks on God's mercy and justice. Sadly, the one who should know better, the one whose whole life is dedicated trying to come close to God like the disciples following Jesus everywhere he goes and yet still arguing about which one of them is the best. <laughs> that one is the one who seems to have forgotten that God's justice and mercy is available to all who seek it, including this tax collector beside him. Something to consider the next time I or any of us chooses to look and think, there but for the grace of God about a single person rather than 
about a situation in life. We need to be careful. Amen. Please turn to page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer, and we will um, say the nice and clean together. I believe in the Lord God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, for all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, and in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven. And is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge my baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Today's prayers of the people will follow form four on page 388 in your Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant almighty God that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love and reveal your glory in the world. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, Jose, our bishop, Bishop Griselda of Cuba, Aaron, our priest, Oscar Rosso, diocesan missioner for Latino ministries and our musicians, and all bishops and other ministers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace that we may honor one another and serve the common good. We pray for the Diocese of Europe, the Diocese of Puerto Rico, the Diocese of Southwest Florida, Provence de Anglais, Anglican du Congo, and St. Luke's in Asheville, Boone, and Lincolnton. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. We pray for Joe, our president, Roy, our governor, and Steve, our mayor. We pray for those in our community who serve in the military, especially for Michael, Ian, Philip, Grayson, Gavin, Jared, Jade, Nicholas, Harry, Chuck, and Philip. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all those whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. We pray for those who struggle with the disappointments, with financial insecurities, with grief over lost loved ones or lost dreams. We pray for relief of pain for those whose bodies and hearts ache and we ask for healing for all who suffer. Remembering, especially in our prayers, Melkor Tomas, Alan Creasman, Mother Erin Kirby, Jim Crawley, Gail Maloney, Nancy Long, Steve Duncan, 
Susie Lockwood, Margaret Hale, Jim and Connie Bergen, Randy Honduras, Alan Brown, Ann Allen, Kathleen Buchanan, Margot Brown-Hampton, Shirley Sheehan, Sam Beckerson, Altoro Cortez, Melinda Wall, Lee Huey, Jane Copenhaver, Austin Case, David Roselle, Frankie and Angie Milliken, Jim Bates, Kevin Owensby, Christine Zellner, Gail Galloway, and all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. We pray especially for the peace of the soul of Chris Van Dyke. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O oh Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people in the multitude of your mercies. Look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O oh lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand for the peace. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, also with, with you. you. Greet your neighbors in the sign of peace. If you will turn to page 830. Alice and Cecilia. Alice and Cecilia. Oh, Cecily. Oh, okay. Two strikes. Sorry. <laughs> Alice and Cecilia. 
Announcements. Most of the announcements are in your bulletin insert. Uh, one thing that uh, is wasn't there that should be is on November fifth. We are having a parish cleanup day, so it starts at nine and goes until about twelve. Anybody that has a, a heart for gardening or dusting or any of those things, please uh, please come during that time, and we will. And we will make this place look lovely for the upcoming fall events and Christmas and all that all that happens there. Um, there is also Danielle has a an announcement. Uh, if you're in Rutherfordton this Thursday, I'm putting on an Indigenous meal at St. Francis Episcopal, mm -hmm. six o'clock in the evening. Uh, we're going to have deer stew and fry bread. Also, I'm looking to move here to Marion. I'm looking to find a room to rent somewhere. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I think that there was something else. Uh, keep the food pantry uh, volunteers in your prayer. They had a record day uh, yeah. on Friday. 170, 170 some 170. Uh, people got boxes. Uh, we are blessed to be able to do this ministry and to feed those who are struggling in our community. The need grows ever larger. Uh, so do keep them in their prayer. Remember that we are collecting ahead of time to get ready for the Thanksgiving boxes. Um, and this month is green beans, mashed potatoes, and canned yams. Canned yams. Okay. <laughs> I just like saying I didn't know yams. I would say canned yams. <laughs> okay. Yes. Green beans, mashed potatoes, and canned yams. Uh, are there other announcements? Oh. Yes. So for the people that don't know about the chicken dinner, it is a fundraiser that we do. It is on November 11th. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? And you can um, sell if you like uh, or purchase. So if you want to sell tickets, CGM also, because you can take them out and sell them. Uh, chicken dinners, either a whole chicken for $13 or a chicken dinner for $10. Uh, it's a very good deal. The port pit barbecue people come and they do the chickens and it smells so hungry all day. I am so hungry all day smelling that because they start at like seven in the morning and I wake up in the morning and walk the dog and think, oh my gosh, I need chicken. Uh, so uh it is it's a fun it's a fun day and um and it's a good fundraiser for our church is it just the episcopal church women or the women and the men the together women and the, men. the women and the men uh together do this so let us uh walk in love as christ has oh sorry so sorry so on november 13th um yeah <laughs> um the western diocese of north carolina which we belong to is having a revival with the presiding bishop michael curry um so as a diocese we are all invited to attend um we would like to carpool so we can kind of all stay together um so i just need to know if anyone is interested in going right now it's me and carrie and laura if you can't and now reese and now janet I feel like I'm, oh, and Danielle, I, I feel like an auctioner right now. Um, for those of you who can't attend, uh, Mother Erin will still be doing so if she can't go. Well, I already get to hear him because of convention. He's here for convention. Right. Yeah, but, yeah. But, so she'll still be doing an 8 and a 10 o'clock, like normal. But if you would like to go to, I can't, it's, uh, it's either Fletcher or Arden. Arden. It's Arden. Arden. 
Oh, now I'm here. At Christ School. So at it's Christ the Episcopal school. school. So a bonus is that if you go to that, you get to see the school, the Episcopal School that's in Arden. Um, oh, Bishop Curry. Because it's the only place big enough to hold all the people that we think will come. And okay. Bishop Curry, yes. Uh, yeah, sorry. No, that's okay. And so, uh, yeah, and there will be multiple places. So if you live closer to Walmart, to Walmart, Amanda will be there to do the carpooling uh, and arrange those people that are there. And if you're closer in town, Carrie will be here, Carrie and Laura, to kind of organize the carpools here. You do need to let them know. So please let us know if you want to attend. That is a Sunday. And what time will you need to leave? Between, um, so the in town would leave at 8.15 and Walmart would leave around 8.30. Apparently you got 15 minutes saved on you there from the Walmart. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Anything else that we need to know? It's just Fletcher. Pardon? It's just Fletcher and the... It must be a mistake if it's Arden. But, but it, we, will, I, we will fix that for next week. I copy and pasted right from the thing, but oh. there's two different, one says Fletcher and one says Arden, so we're going to GPS it. And we will call. But it's off Sweet Creek Road. Okay. It yeah. isn't that. We'd like to go, but we'll probably drive ourselves since we don't know the there. Okay. Yeah, no, that's fine. I will um, GPS, uh, GPS you the address. And so I'll maybe every, email you the address. And maybe you can arrange to like meet in the parking lot somewhere and everybody sit together. That would be fun. Well, Fletcher and Arden are very close yeah. together. Yes, yeah, Sweet Creek Road is half Fletcher. Like okay. the right side's here, Fletcher, the right side's Arden. Arden's closer to us. All right, so we can do some more planning about this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and that, uh, uh, pretty soon, because we, we need to uh, uh, do the rest of the service. Uh, I did want one more announcement. So the last time that Mike played uh, down at the spillway for their brunch time, uh, several of us went and it was lovely and their brunch is really good, um, which was gravy on getting to hear Mike uh, play uh, during that time and the, and the vocalist that he accompanies. It was awesome. So the next time, do you know when? Okay. But when he books it again, we will we will try to go together again because it was really fun thank you and we thank you so let us walk in love as christ has loved us as a fragrant offering to god <laughs>
hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. And we are on page 369 in the Book of Common Prayer for Eucharistic Prayer C. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory, glory to you glory. forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be, the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets and their forces, and this fragile earth, our island home. I am the will you were created and have to be. From the primal elements you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the stewards of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have, Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time you sent your only Son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood he reconciled us. By his wounds we are healed. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. <laughs> Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers and mothers, God of Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebecca, Jacob, Leah and Rachel, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. And now, as Christ our Savior has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, our Father who, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day 
our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore let, let us keep, keep the feast. Alleluia. Lamb of God, you take, take away the sins of the world. Have, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us thy peace. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Take them in remembrance that Christ came because God loves you, sees you as worthy, and invites you to this table.
We will be saying the prayer at, on page 366. Almighty and ever living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And may today you find peace within. May you trust God that you are exactly where you are meant to be. May you not forget the infinite possibilities that are born of faith. And may you use those gifts that you have received and pass on the love that has been given to you. May you, in fact, be content knowing that you are a child of God. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and go with you this day, now and always. Amen. Amen.
he gives. Let us go forth to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia.